You have to face the camera. Go. Sit down, Monty. Where, Monty? There. How about that? I'm just waiting to attack her. Hmm. You waiting to be attacked? Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a video specifically about our two chows, Monty and Zephyr. You've seen them in many of our other videos, but today we thought we'd share you some insight into um, the child breed themselves. Well, you know what today is? Today's Monty's birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Yep. Today he is four years old. Yep. So we probably will do a little celebration later by giving him some ice cream. Why do we have chows? And that's an interesting question. And we've had chows for probably 30 years. Um, when we got our first one back in, I think, you know, the end of the 80s or beginning of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, a blue chow, which looked very similar to Monty, but a little bit more of a gray tint to the fur. And her name was Empress. And at the same time, we had two other dogs. Well, we at, at the same time for a while, we had two other dogs, two Norwegian Alcons, which were the kind of breed of dog that we really liked at that point. But we got into, um, chows were very fashionable then. And a lot of people were getting chows and we, uh, Wanted to get one, and, and so we, we found, saw an ad in the paper and, and went and picked up uh, Empress. And she was a real good dog, and we kind of liked the breed. And we've kind of slowly migrated over to getting more chows, and, and we've gotten away from having other breed of dogs. And so for the last probably 20 years, we've had pretty much just chows. And we usually have two of them at a time. And so Monty, this is Monty here, he's the black one, and this is Zephyr, and they are both rescue dogs, though Monty we did get as a puppy, his whole litter was put up for adoption through the rescue, um, and we worked with Chow Chow Rescues of Central New York, but they don't just limit themselves to New York State, Monty came from Georgia, and Zephyr came from uh, Canada, from Toronto, Canada. So they are from all over the place. Um, it's a great organization we've gotten. These, these are the second and third dogs we've gotten from that organization. We've also rescued our chows through the local animal shelters and other places too. So we, we um, prefer to rescue dogs if we can. Right, it's, it's a good way to um, help out um, the local rescue while at our farm, as well as, like Randy said, the central New York Chow Rescue. Yeah. What do we like about Chows? Chows are extremely loyal. Um, they're, they're so loyal that they actually pick favorites within the family. Right. Right now, Zephyr's favorite is Randy, who she follows around exclusively and uh, doesn't like to let him out of her sight. Occasionally she'll come to me, but mostly to Randy. Yeah. And Monty, I mean, he really, you know, likes both of us. He doesn't have a favorite. No, he's, his favorite is Zephyr, really. Yeah, they, um, Zephyr was almost two when we got Monty. So she kind of trained him and uh, they become best buddies. They still play. Not as much because they're a little bit older, but occasionally they'll get that burst of energy where they'll play in the house or if we're camping uh, or in our backyard. And the two of them just bonded, had the best time. They chased each other around the yard and they've continued to do that you know, every day since. Um, these two are absolutely their, their best friends and they enjoy each other's company. Um, and and it's, I think it's good to have two dogs because I think 
you know, as much as dogs like human contact, they also like you know dog contact with other dogs. And, and right. these right. guys especially, they, they enjoy their company and, and Monty really enjoys the company of other dogs though he's sometimes not the most sociable. Right, he's very hesitant when we meet strangers or other dogs, whereas Zephyr um, is very social. She'll, she likes other dogs, she'll you know, sniff other dogs, and you know, then she'll, she won't be, she's not aggressive at all, and she certainly likes other people, and will go up to them, and she'll jump on, up on, and want to be petted, and petted, and petted. Now, I would kind of preface it that with, she's very social if we're around. I think she would be less social if we weren't there. She'd be very protective. Yeah, she, if we're um, out camping, and she sees strange dogs or strange people walk by, she will bark. Do chow chows require a lot of grooming? Definitely. They, I think they shed like year round. Um, we do try to have them groomed every few weeks. It's a little bit harder when we are traveling, but the more we travel, we'll have to find other groomers that we can take them to along the way. But they do require, you know, either day to day or every other day brushing and Randy is responsible for doing that. They do shed quite a bit and I spend every day vacuuming our house and picking up tons of fur that you really cannot see from you know the visible eye. Yeah. So uh, yep. So they are kind of high maintenance. The other thing about chows though is you don't have to give them a bath that often. Their fur is very dry. And if you were to bathe them a lot, um, they, you tend to have, they tend to get skin problems. And so you don't want to over bathe the, the chows. Mm -hmm. um, we've never had a lot of medical problems around with our chows. So we've been fortunate because they really don't like to go to the vet. <laughs> well, it's not that they don't like to go to the vet. Now, one of the things about a chow is they're not, a super social dog. They they tend to not trust people they don't know. And we've had Monty's probably a very good case of that. He's very aloof to strangers. He's very curious. If he sees you, you might think he wants to be petted because he's kind of looking at you and, and checking you out. When you reach down to pet him, he will back away. They're a very stubborn dog too. Um, that I would say is one of the uh, bad traits about a child. They can be very stubborn. These two, especially Monty, do have that stubborn streak. If he doesn't want to do something, he won't. Okay. And he's very difficult to, you know, move around once he puts the brakes on. Zephyr has a stubborn streak where if she doesn't want to do something, um, she will, you know, sit in place or stand in place. Fortunately for with her, you know, if you coax her a little bit, she'll do fine. She wants to please. Yeah. Um, and, and that kind of goes back to her finding the favorites in the family. I mean, she would do pretty much anything I tell her to do. She's very comfortable with what with, with, we might want her to do something. In fact, that she's so good that she'll just follow me anywhere without a leash or anything. She's really good about that. Um, Monty not so much, um, but don't confuse their stubbornness with not being intelligent because they're very smart dogs and they're very trainable but they take a lot more patience because of that stubbornness and I, I say that because we Monty's been to obedience school and he's okay he's not a top student but we found that if he wants to learn something he's really good at it and an example of that is one of the things we've taught him to do is to go get the mail every day. And he doesn't actually go to the mailbox and bring the mail back. But when we get the mailman comes during the day, you know, he listens and hears the mailman truck and he'll be by the window. And then we will walk out, the three of us, Monty, Zephyr, and I, without leashes, and he'll walk out to the mailbox with me and then follow me back. And he's really good about that. So he likes to get the mail. Mm -hmm. And he picked that up really fast, probably less than two weeks, to be able to do that completely off-leash and be completely 
under control off leash. I can, you know, if he hears something or if there's something of a distraction, I just have to talk to him and he knows that this is what he's supposed to do. But they are, they are very smart, they're very trainable, you just need to work with them. How do they travel? Oh, um, since we started traveling with him, we, or with both of them actually, they do ride in the back seat of our truck. Um, whenever they're in the truck, they do, whether we're towing the uh, trailer or not, that's where they sit. Most of the time, Zephyr, once she gets in and gets settled, she'll sleep for hours on end. Occasionally she'll, you know, sit up. She might jump up on the center console or look up, look up the window, but that's not very often, unless there is a treatment ball. Um, Monty, on the other hand, he's very interested in what's going on and where we are, you know, so he will sleep, but a lot of times he'll sit in the, in the bath or he'll jump up on the windows. But more times than not, after he's rested or been there for a while, he will jump up on the center console and look around. Um, not sure what he's seeing, but he likes to know where we are. Um, we usually are, of course, in different locations, so he's very interested in that. But they, they are excellent travelers. Yes. So uh, I wouldn't worry if you do have a child and, you know, you do start to travel or are traveling. They are very good. They are very good campers as well. We should probably explain their names. We, we got into a naming theme with our dogs um, over the past few years. Or the past few dogs, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to, we rescued a dog probably 20 years ago now um, and he's he came from the rescue and his name was Ranger and we just got we just liked that name because at the time I, I had a Ranger pickup Ford Ranger pickup and so we just liked that name and we thought it was really cool to have a dog named after a vehicle and so we went to get another dog and it was a female and we you know, decided, well, well, we're going to name this dog. And then we came up with Shelby after the Shelby Mustangs. Um, and so you're starting to sense a theme here. And so that just kind of grew. And so we think we've had uh, our next dog after after Shelby was named Maverick. Um, we had uh, another dog named Sierra. And then we got to Zephyr. And, and we were trying to come up with a very unique name. And, you know, and again, staying with a car named Fiend. And so we thought, well, you know, Zephyr's really cool because there's a, um, Lincoln had a Lincoln Zephyr car and we thought that was pretty neat. And so we decided to name her that. And then we're coming to Monty, we're like, well, what are we gonna name Monty? Well, we kind of went back and forth and, and I came up with the name Monteagle and Diane didn't really like that, but she liked the shortening of Monteagle just to Monty. And so we decided that was gonna be his name but his, you know, his actual name is Monteagle. Um, you took keep in with a car named Fiend. His formal name. Yeah, his formal name. His full, <laughs> his full name. When he's in trouble, he's called Monteagle. He knows the difference. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think he really knows that name and why we're calling him that. Right. He definitely, you know, he responds more to Monty. Yep. So that's the name, and then obviously Zephyr travels got named after Zephyr. Um, and it was just, at the time, really liked that name Zephyr and, and wanted to use it and again in something else. And so decided to name the YouTube channel after Zephyr. And it was maybe at, at one point we're thinking, well, maybe it could be focused on just the dog's travels, but then it's really our travels. And so. Yep, yeah, that's one reason we uh, bought the trailer, so we could travel with the dogs. But we have not come across one campground that made us leave because of the dogs. No, no, we've never had we've never had a problem at a campground with the dogs. I think. Well, we can't wait for mom to come back. You gonna turn around? Yeah. Good boy, sit. Good. Take it. There you go. 
treats later. Yep, we're gonna get the treats. Okay. Well, we hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. And what should they do to follow along? Uh, subscribe to our channel. That's right, and ring the bell for notifications. That way you know uh, you can stay up to date on our journeys, which don't seem to be happening too much right now. Right, we're kind of <laughs> at a, we are at a stay at home mode because of the uh, coronavirus that has hit the US. So for the time being, we are here and probably will do more videos of what we're doing, including the dogs. Um, so stay tuned. And if you thought about getting a, ch a chow or any dog, I would highly recommend it. What they give you in return is certainly well worth it. Yeah, yeah, they are they are great companions, and wouldn't think about sharing this RV lifestyle with any anyone else but our dogs and her and him. <laughs> <laughs> so until the next time, we will see you from our house or as we walk through our village. That's right. So everyone, stay safe, wash your hands a lot, and... Practice social distancing. That's right, so we can get through this as soon as we can. And we will see you back on the road, hopefully, very shortly. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.